It was another excellent start for New Zealand with the reliable Steve Wooden giving the All Whites a 1-0 half-time lead against Kuwait. Out by Walid. And a fine goal! Oh, brilliant goal by Steve Wooden! Brilliant goal! Marvellous, marvellous strike by Steve Wooden. It hardly came off the ground. And no wonder the crowd are going mad. However, the second half proved very different and an experience the New Zealand players found hard to accept. And they're in a bit of trouble here. And a penalty's been given. A penalty's been given, judging from the referee's uh, signs, that was for handball. And so Richard Wilson, who's had this record for 10 full games. And the crowd on their feet, 910 minutes as he faced this shot from Jessam and he saved it. Nine minutes later, the unthinkable was to happen. Naeem. And it hit the crossbar. And another handball given. Another handball given on the edge of the area. But the ball surely then struck hand. There's no way there were penalties, and as far as I remember, I said so. I mean, it, they, they, were, it, they were ludicrous decisions. It was never a penalty. I mean, it's, um, I think when you look at the footage now and, and the way that the ball was played in, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure what the referee expected the player to do. I felt cheated that day. I mean, there's no doubt about it. There were penalties you couldn't get away from. I mean, there, sometimes if I had a ball as hard as I come at you right there, you can't disappear. It's going to hit you. You didn't play the ball, the ball played you. I felt that happened to John Hill and Steve Sumner. Steve Sumner was on the line, defending the line, and somebody headed it point blank. If he hits your arm and goes out, you can't chop your arm off. In his own country, they may interpret, you know, any handball as a penalty. But, you know, there was no intent on either Hiller or myself in that game. Um, and they, to me, should never have been penalties. The ball surely aimed at the hand, and I really can't see how the referee could give a penalty for that. Clearly it was, it was disastrous and and I think when he gave that it was like, oh here we go again. We got a spectator on the field throwing something at the referee. Oh dear, oh dear, this we did not want to see. The boy went to court and the the judge found him ten dollars for throwing the can and twenty dollars for missing. So I mean everybody wanted the lad to get away. I mean, go on. I said when he threw it and then he's going across the pitch, he'd go on, oh you don't catch him. I don't know if they did catch him. I don't think they made much of an effort, but no, good on him. I mean, I, I felt that way. It's just pent-up frustration. He, he was only, I think he was only feeling the same as everybody in that stadium. And Wilson did move, but it didn't matter anyway. Ball went the other way, and Faisal has made the score 1-1. There seemed like an injustice. That's what I'm saying. It just seemed so surreal that this had occurred. Why is it happening to us? It's almost like saying, well, what have we done to deserve that penalty against us? You know, we've been pretty strong all the way through. We're not a nasty, violent side. We know we go out and play hard football. Uh, we're on this path and this journey, and we were successful in doing so well. The gods were looking down for us. Luck was going our way, and everything seems so bloody rosy in the garden. And then all of a sudden, this occurs. And so we're saying, well, hold on a minute. Who did this? This, isn't, this shouldn't be happening. And it did, and I think that's what just rocked us. Then having got themselves into... Uh, the position where they were going to get a point. They, New Zealand went chasing the game. They, they felt they had to win the home games. And that was their undoing. That's curling. Yes, sir. And a fine goal. What about a foot or so above the ground? Got in the header. And gives Kuwait a 2-1 lead. It was, it was disappointing because our performance had been at a level that we deserved a little bit more than that. Uh, and sometimes in football, it goes against you. You've got to live with it. Well, the referee not allowing as much time for stoppages as we made it brings the game to an end to a chorus of boos. And I'm afraid his part in the game is he's immediately surrounded by policemen. His part in the game had a sad effect for New Zealand. And that day, I mean, I mean, look straight at the ref. I mean, I saw the ref after the game. These days, I think he'd be fined about $10,000 
what I said to the ref after the game. Yeah, I think you could sense within the team that this was a real frustration. This was um, something that we didn't want to accept. It wasn't right. Um, and we've worked so hard to think that something like this um, could actually spoil it all. It, it, didn't, it didn't look 100%. And, you know, it, it's, it's hard to say that he was cheating or he wasn't cheating, but uh, it's, it, it just seemed to be going, the bad decisions were all one way. It was, it was one of the only games that I played and that I, I thought the referee um, was dodgy. Mr. Sadaso, it's not a name that I suppose it's, it's indelibly written in, in, uh, in New Zealand uh, football history, but he belongs possibly with a gentleman called Ali Benasser who didn't note the hand of God from, from, uh, <laughs> from Maradona. We heard loads of things. I mean, I heard that they, had, uh, they, they arrived in their own jet, can't remember exactly with a briefcase full of money, 400,000 American dollars. And I heard that from the staff at the hotel we were at, the Senate same flights, and they left with none. Now, they must have been great spenders. I don't know about money, but I think there was uh, some sort of reward changed hands, definitely. The interesting thing for me is that back then, you never thought that at all. In football, you just thought, nah, it's football, it's straight, it's international football, doesn't happen. But of course, as we've gone on now, we've seen it in all sorts of games. I mean, there's something going off now in Italy, and there was something last year in Germany, you know. So, um, back then, no, we didn't think, didn't think so. It was only after that we ho heard all these things, and you, you look at those things, and I, and I still like to think that it was referee's interpretation of the rules, and he got it wrong. It's like everything else, if you want to achieve something, you've got to overcome these hurdles. And to us, that was a major hurdle. And uh, sure, you're disappointed, you're angry, um, you have a whole range of emotions running through your body. You think, is this the end of the World Cup for me? Um, but I think with John and Kevin,